today I bring you some inspiring, hopefully inspiring, moving, or critical, make you think critically. Some words from Maya Angelou, who is best known for President Clinton's inauguration, but has been a doctor and resident of Arkansas for quite some time. Hope you enjoy. And he has remained courage, particularly because we are not wise enough to try to educate ourselves so that we really can develop courage. So we act uh, like cowards. We are sitting in uh, rooms where people use pejoratives, racial pejoratives, or sexual pejoratives, and where people assault them. And uh, we beleaguer other people, Mexican or Arab or Jewish. We just sit there like numbskulls instead of picking up because for the who, whoever is being assailed, it's you, meet me. <laughs> so you should say, excuse me, just a minute. I can't, I won't sit in this room when people are being assailed. Those are human beings, and I'm a human being. And so I have to take up, I must support this person. You see, he's too skinny, he's too fat, he's thin, stupid, bad teeth. I mean, wait a minute. The statement is, I am a human being. Nothing human can be alien to me. And if you know that, then you have enough courage, develop enough courage so that you can stand up for somebody. And in, without, maybe you don't know it at the time, but you're really standing up for yourself. It's the human in you. It's the, the kindness in you which allows you to be courageous. We develop courage in small ways. You uh, say, I will not be called this. Because I'm a woman, I'm not a B. Because I'm black, I'm not an N. Because I'm an American, I'm not a fool or a murderer. I'm not that. We have to develop ways so that you can take it for yourself. And then you take it for someone else. And so sooner or later, you, you have enough courage to really stand up for, for the human race and say I'm a representative. The evil is the word of things. And they harm or they can uplift. I look at our current political environment. I see a lack of courage. I see us turning our our opponents into enemies. And I see us using our words as weapons. Beyond partisanship, beyond the supporting this candidate or that, is there some lesson from the political world that we can gain? I don't know how we can after the fact, after the election, how we can look at each other with friendly eyes and for all intents and purposes, curse each other out and say that this person is not really, this person is a liar, a brute, this person is a fraud. And then the, the uh, elections will take place and then we have to work together in the House of Representatives or in the Senate in the supermarket. I think it's fair and proper to say to explain explain your point of view and what you hope to achieve. That's fair. But that doesn't mean then that they, they show the say that of the other person who has another agenda that he's a a vote. Or she's she's a, a terrible word. That's not that's stupid. And I'm, what breaks my heart to Miss Perry, Dr. Perry, what breaks my heart is to think, what would our nation be like if we dared to be intelligent? If we dared to allow our intelligence to dictate our movements, our actions? What would, can you imagine? Those words indeed inspired me, made me think, and um, I've always came at it from the perspective 
if, if I break something, like say a glass door, say anything, break a car, if I'm not hurt, I always think somebody made that and broke their back to make it. It wasn't me, they're part of my species, and I just destroyed it and kind of feel a little bit of guilt because I'm part of the human race. And I think that's what she's trying to encompass. No matter who you vote for, putting the other person down so much, they're the same, they're human too, they just have a different way of looking at things, which she shouldn't be politically polarizing, like a Democrat or Republican thing. It should be something like we're all in this together. We're all humans, and no matter how we touch each other's lives, let's make it in a positive way. And remember that everything we do touches somebody indirectly, touches one of our own species. You know, everything around us isn't made by animals, it's made by us. Not by maybe us personally, but by our species. And they put so much labor and love into that, that we should take care of everything that we inherit from the air. That's what I took from it. And it's made to think you think critically, and uh, or at least think, and whatever conclusion you come to, it's great. Have a great day, everyone. I am very happy to be able to bring you such a deep and inspiring hopefully for most of you, broadcast today. Bye. Peace.